go into the road. Thank you. <laughs> That was a bit of work, but I wonder what this could be. It's certainly not running like a three pound perch, that's for sure. <laughs> going to take it steady and we'll get it in in its own time. Yep, just power. My, it could end up being two pound. <laughs> One thing's for sure, this is a good battle on a two to ten, ten gram ultralight. not seen a glimpse of this fish yet and it's been a good couple of minutes now oh, just want to make sure she doesn't run under them ropes this fish absolutely does not know it's hooked at the moment Very hard to gauge them on tackle this light, but that's a lot of bubbles from the bottom. <laughs> this fish is really strong. Mark's had to drop the camera for a moment and pull the rope because it ran me straight around it. There was absolutely nothing I could do to stop this fish from running. <laughs> I just changed the lure colour a second ago because I wasn't getting bites and wallop fish on. I was going for the front rope now. Okay, Let's see if we can lift her a bit. There's probably quite a lot of my backside showing so I apologise to the viewers. <laughs> There she comes. And she's in the net, yes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we're out today fishing with the new craft shad. I just switched over to a little bright colour and straight away I was nailed by this beautiful broadened pike. Now it's not an absolute monster but probably a scraper double right there. Beautiful fish, lovely markings, glowing fins. <laughs> Tiny lure, the little 7.2 centimetre size and what a battle on the ultralight rod. Wow, well we better get you back, thank you. <laughs> well, 
what an exciting start to the morning. <laughs> We're out here today fishing on my local broads with the new craft shads. Fantastic little lurzies. They come in three sizes, 7.2, I believe 8.5 and 10 centimetres. And they're different profiles to what we've got in the range at the moment. Much more suited to that finesse style of predator fishing. <laughs> Anyway, we'd, we'd cast around a few of the other colours and struggled, so I swapped over to this perch pattern, which is, I mean, it's a very hot perch, but not quite fire tiger. It really seems to draw the attention of perch and pike, and it wasn't long until a nice pike came along and slammed it. But of course, on this little two to 10 gram outfit, it was running us wild. Well, we got it in the net and it's a fantastic start to the day, but as we persevere, hopefully we'll see a few more fish and some of the target species, the perch as well. There we go. So when I'm working jigs like these, there's a couple of ways I like to present them. Sometimes I like to fish them slow, so a couple of little bounces, and a pause, just repeating that process. A few little bounces and a pause. When fish are quite lethargic and hunkered down, this can be really effective. But when fish are a little bit more active, I like to do larger vertical bounces. Kind of keeping a little bit of motion in that lure all the time. As soon as I feel it touch down, I'm kicking it. Really sort of working that bottom two feet of the column. That I find quite effective for pike when they're very active and smashing around. Also effective for perch. Of course, fishing with larger paddle tails as well, even small ones, just retrieving straight can be quite effective. Particularly when you see those signs of bait fish scattering and fish moving around, just allowing that lure to drop to where you want it in the water column and working it with a straight wine can be really effective. Oh, there's a fish. Now, <laughs> any guess what this could be? Well, it's certainly not fighting like a perch. Oh, it's another nice size pike. Oh, there we go. Whoa, he's going for the rope. Don't you go in there. <laughs> oh my. Oh, here we go. Not quite as big as I thought, but hey. Oh, and the lure's out in the net. Look at that. <laughs> That's how easy they go. As soon as that pressure releases, quite often the fish will just drop straight off. We'll lift this one for a quick look. Oh, it's a lovely conditioned fish, ever so fat. Oh, wow. This one's eaten all the fries. <laughs> there we go. And it's actually a pug jawed pike, this one. If you take a close look at the jaw there, you can see it's got a small jaw deformity, the top lip being quite small and the bottom lip protruding. An absolutely beautiful fish on the 10 centimetre craft shad. Fantastic. Fish number two for the morning. All right, there we go. There we go. And off she goes. Hey, fantastic. Right, well, <laughs> that. 10 centimetre craft is proving quite a deadly little lure so far. <laughs> and that fish came to the slower of the retrieves actually. I was just hopping that and giving it about a second to pause before bouncing it again. And it was on the pause when it picked it up and absolutely walloped around the rod tip. They're in absolutely fantastic condition this time of year. 
water temperatures are beginning to warm up and they're really feeding hard trying to pile on those pounds ready for when they do do the deed. Another one of those and a lovely perch and that'll be a morning to be content with. One of the things that I think makes these craft shads really appealing is the slightly thinner tail stem and that really fast wobbling tail. That kicks off a lot of vibration, a lot of movement and it really triggers fish to take. Also, being a slimmer tail profile, it makes it very easy to fold up in the mouth of a perch, which means you can get away with fishing perhaps a slightly larger lure than you would usually. You can just see with barely any movement is needed to get that little lure moving and kicking around. Yeah, perch are the intended species and one of the reasons we've come out here today with the craft shad is because I received these about just before the end of the season. I was, I was very keen to get out there and give them a go. Anyway, I fished for a day and had a, had a lot of small pike and as it was drawing into evening, the sun was glistening and I swapped over to this new motor oil color. It's a fantastic color. It really attracts the light and glows up almost amber light. And in the end, the decision to change and fish on that 10 centimeter size really paid off as I banked a new PB perch at four pound three ounce. Absolutely thrilled. These will definitely be making a regular place in my tackle box. So, these little craft shads, there's plenty of ways that you can rig these. The most simple and easiest method being on a straightforward jig head. Now, I like to have my hooks quite far forward on my soft plastics, and the reason I do that is because I want the maximum amount of body movement in the lure that I can achieve. I'm confident that a fish is gonna to totally engulf and smash that. You can push the hook a little bit further back on these, as they have quite a thin tail profile, you can do that without compromising too much lure action as you would with a perhaps slightly fatter profile chad. <laughs> now, rigging them on the jig head is fairly straightforward and simple. You just take your hook, compare it to the bait, visually mark up where it's going to exit and just feed it through. Out it comes and there we go ready to fish with. I can move that slightly forwards if I want a little bit more hook point pronounced, which I quite often like if I'm fishing for pike. Now, as for hook sizes, you've got a lot of room in these shads to go for a hook that really suits your style of fishing. So on the small seven centimeters, maybe a 1.0 or 2.0, whereas on these largest 10 centimeter shads, you can go right up to a 4.0 on them without too many problems. So another option you have when we rigging these little craft shads is an offset hook. Now you can do that with a Cheb or with a Texas weight and it's very simple. You just, again, offer the hook up to the lure, visually marking where it's going to come out, run it through the head of the lure, thread that right up to the eye and run it through the body. And these lures are slim enough and soft enough to work nicely on a weedless setup. Again, with sizes, I've found for the small seven centimeters, a 1.0 is fine, the 8.5 is a 2.0, and the 10 centimeter, a 3.0 is about perfect. And there you go, a nice little weedless setup for perch. You can rig these on the drop shot as well, and many other methods. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
There we go. <laughs> A little one. Gosh. <laughs> Oh, give me that tail back. <laughs> right, let's have another cast in there. I thought it was beginning to get a few bites just in that just in that edge there. I think, you know, we're right at the end of the season now and possibly the bigger perch have got other things on their mind. <laughs> There's certainly a few wasps about just as the light fails. Well, the light's going and fishing's been pretty tough today. We started off okay with a couple of pike and it really went quite slow from there, but as, as the sun faded away, we began to get a few bites and scaling down to the small seven centimetre craft shad, just, just put a few fish on the bank. They're not monsters, but absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Sitting back. Well, we've had a little play with these new craft sheds today and to be honest, it's, um, it's a lure I've developed a lot of confidence in having had my PV on it just the other week. Well, today wasn't quite the day, but hey, we, we caught a couple of lovely pike and we did get a little bit of wasp action, so yeah, it wasn't all, um, wasn't all bad at all. And certainly, wow, what a fight that first pike gave on the custom ultralight. <laughs> it was a good fun day all in all and I mean, next time I'm out, the tables could be completely turned and I might be into some real lumps. So, just got to keep at it, I guess.